Hey guys and welcome to another tutorial video in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 in the Airbus A320neo. Today we're going to have a look at something which I've been asked a lot about in the live streams and that is how do you know when to start descending? And it's a relatively simple question and the, I wish I could give you the easy answer which is that the Airbus A320 calculates it for you and tells you when you need to start descending. Well this is true in the real world the real aircraft it does it gives you a top of descent point in your flight plan and you uh, you basically initialize the top of descent there and the aircraft works out the best rate of descent keeping you on a nice vertical profile all the way down to your target altitude near your destination unfortunately that is not yet implemented in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 uh, but I do know the fly-by-wire guys are working on it so for now we have to do what's called a general rule of thumb. So we're at, uh, or we should be at, 22,000 feet at the moment. Just one minute. I had set this up just before I jumped into the cockpit, but of course the autopilot occasionally wants to do something else. That's right, we've got that going. So we're on our way to Bristol and we're currently at 18,500 feet. I'm just going to increase that to 20,000 feet just for the point of this uh, this little exercise here so there we go we're starting to climb now um, yes yeah, so we're gonna be at 20,000 feet and if we just zoom in on our little plan here let me lower the range and if I skip through the waypoints so there is uh, there's Bristol on the navigation display and just want to make sure you can see my cursor here so you can see what I'm pointing to so on the navigation display, here's Bristol, and uh, the published approach for Bristol tells us that we fly over the airfield, and then we make sort of like a loop around to come in and land. And if you can see the constraints here, it's telling us we need to be at uh, 2,500 feet for this approach. Okay, fair enough. Well, we're going to be arriving, we'll currently be uh, cruising at 20,000 feet, so how do we know when to start descending to make sure that we hit this particular altitude at the right time and it's actually a very simple uh, rule of thumb that you can use so basically we're at 20,000 feet and we want to get to 2,500 feet so 20,000 feet minus 2,500 feet tells us that we need to lose an altitude of 17 and a half thousand feet 17,500 feet now that's the important figure the altitude that you want to lose 17,500 feet divide that by 1,000 and that gives you 17.5 times that by 3 so if you multiply that by 3 we get 52.5 we'll round that up to 53 and then we add 10 to that just to give us a little bit of extra stopping distance and slowing down distance so that gives us a distance of 62.5 miles or 63 miles what that means is when we start to see these waypoints as being about 63 miles away on our plan and we can do that now so if we zoom in here we can see now that they are at about 62 miles away right now so now is the time for us to start our top of descent you may now be wondering how fast do I descend how slow do I descend well I'll give you again this general rule of thumb so we are going to tell the aircraft to descend to this altitude that we've just that we want to be at 2500 feet and we are going to initiate a descent rate of 1800 feet per minute and this is the important bit we now want to slow the aircraft down and be descending at a rate of about 270 knots Bearing in mind, and this is something to be uh, aware of, <coughs> in the uh, in the Airbus A320 as it stands at the moment, if you're at a higher altitude, so 30,000 feet plus, you're obviously going to be working in max speed and not knots. And for some reason, there's a little bug at the moment, you can't change it back to, uh, to knots unless you drop below a certain altitude. I'm unsure of what that altitude is uh, because it's, it's not real life. Um, you should be able to go back into knots at any particular time that you want. Uh, so just be aware, you will need to move the, uh, move the speed dial and you can look here at the speed tape to see how many knots you're currently traveling at of course also be aware that whilst you are in max speed that speed changes the lower down you get so you need to keep an eye on your speed as you initiate your descent 
You can also keep an eye on the N1 engines here just to see how much you're using. And what we really want to be doing is trying to get almost an idle thrust or very, very low thrust throughout your top of descent. That is, uh, that's basically a good descent profile, which means that your aircraft is losing height and using the uh, the energy, the gravitational energy that it's got to cruise down to that altitude, 2,500 feet, with very little, if any, thrust at all. This, of course, saves fuel, saves less wear on the uh, gives less wear on the engines, um, and that's what you want to do. Ordinarily, the real Airbus will give you, as I said earlier, a top of descent, and it will descend you down at that perfect rate, and will keep you on what's known as the perfect descent profile. Perfect for the aircraft wanting to be using as little fuel as possible. So, we're just going to watch this, and hopefully you'll see that these calculations that we've just done are correct. So, whilst we're doing that descent, I'm just going to go through that in case we missed it uh, once more. So, we were at 20,000 feet we want to reach an altitude of 2,500 feet which means that the amount of height in feet that we wanted to lose is 17,500 feet divide that figure by 1,000 and then times it multiply it by 3 that gives you 52.5 miles so you can start your descent 52.5 miles away from that waypoint however I always add in an extra 10 miles just to slow the aircraft down so when we add 10 to that we get 62.5 round it up 63 miles now of course this is just a general rule of thumb there are some other things that we need to take into account for instance if we had a strong tailwind which we don't today it's quite nice if you had a strong tailwind you may want to start start that descent a little bit sooner if you've got a strong headwind you can start it a little bit later we're not talking massive figures here and of course it's only a rule of thumb so you do have to make sure that you're keeping an eye on things once you get past 10,000 feet as well remember you need to be at 250 knots or below so the aircraft's still sending down towards Bristol. We're about f just hitting the 40 mile range ring here. And that's all, uh, all we can do at the moment until we've got top of descent calculated. Bearing in mind, of course, I'm working on two and a half thousand feet just because they are the constraints that are uh, listed here for uh, the approach at Bristol. If you are doing a long star approach, standard instrument arrival approach, into a different airport, it may tell you that you need to be at, say, 12,000 feet by a particular point, in which case the same uh, rule of thumb arrives. Work out how many feet you need to lose by that particular waypoint, then divide that by 1,000, times it by three and then just add 10 to that and that will give you the miles away from that particular waypoint that you need to start the descent to hit that uh, hit that target so i am just gonna let this run out just so you can see the this work but basically that's how uh, a general rule of thumb for the top of descent works and it's uh, to be honest it's never really failed me you do sometimes as i said just have to keep an eye on things weather can play an important factor um for tailwinds pushing you down and of course if you are higher up i mentioned that this will be working in max speed until you get to a lower altitude of about 20,000 feet when you can set it to knots so you want to maintain about 270 knots which whilst that little bug is still uh, in the flight simulator of not being able to move from max speed you do need to keep an eye on where this target speed is and uh, what the n1 gauge is uh, is showing you of course the other thing that we can do if you are a little bit too fast is we're reaching 10,000 feet now so i want to reduce that to uh, a speed low 250 knots so what i will do now is i'll pull the speed brakes the spoilers out and the wind starts rushing over there you can hear that So we're about now, about what, 20, th about 30 miles away. So that's still looking good. Good rate of descent. Of course, you also need to be aware if you have got the Navigraph charts that there will also be other speed restrictions in place as well. Um, sometimes they say you need to be at 220 knots by a certain waypoint. So there are all these little things to factor in. This is a video basically just explaining that general rule of thumb to you. Um, 
what are the rules of three there are other ways of calculating of course this is just my preferred method because it always gets me to the waypoint of my choosing at the altitude that I want it to be and I think it's pretty easy to work out um, how many how many feet I want to lose divide by a thousand multiply it by three and then just add ten for uh, slowing the aircraft down so we're at our target speed as well now so we'll obviously be a little bit slower in reaching our waypoint but that's uh, that's fine that's part of this uh, profile I've got I can pop the spoilers back in and we watch the N1 starting to uh, roll back there if your spoilers are out and you've got the engines working hard then you don't need the spoilers so you can see that's just reducing its thrust quite nicely and uh, just need to oh, set local pressure which is quite low today in uh, in the UK so all these little constraints that you've got here as well they would actually be taken into account you can see we needed to be at minus four thousand or lower than four thousand seven hundred feet by this particular waypoint Inga uh, so I could have calculated for that. I could have said I want to make sure that I am at 4,700 feet by Inga and I could have done the calculation based on that. Just for this example, I've done it on um, on the waypoints surrounding Bristol Airport. Airport. <coughs> and as you can see now, that's uh, working quite nicely. So basically, the idea behind uh, the descent rate is you want the best rate of descent trying to keep your thrust levers at idle bear in mind that's done automatically of course um, keeping it as uh, at idle for as long as possible so you're burning less fuel less wear on the engines it's also less noisy for uh, for any noise abatement rules rules uh, if you descend too quickly, then what tends to happen is you are then traveling at a very low altitude for a very long time. Um, one, that's, uh, that's loud on the people on the ground. Two, it uses a lot more fuel than you need to burn just because the air is thicker. It needs to burn more fuel to maintain that altitude. And as we can see, I'm just going to go into heading mode here and... Uh, make a manual turn so we're 20 miles away and we can now just start to reduce that rate of descent maybe like a thousand feet per minute which is good because that helps slow our speed down as you can see we've actually uh, I've not been paying attention I've been talking to you but our speeds actually crept up just there look so we need to make sure that maintains under 250 knots and at this point we're about 17 miles according to the range rings from the airfield so we can slow our rate of descent down to about 500 feet per minute which is good that means that you can slow down the uh, slow down the aircraft and we can even look in a moment at entering the uh, approach phase but as you can see that has got us down to the waypoints the altitude wanted to be <coughs> and we're not particularly too far out of that as well Ordinarily, you wouldn't be targeting the uh, the final approach altitude, the platform altitude for the ILS approach. You'd uh, you'd be targeting a waypoint that was a little bit further out. Uh, but oh, it's a little bit misty, isn't it, at Bristol this evening? And you can just hear the uh, radar altimeter calling out as we're going over some of the terrain below. Yeah, so if you uh, if you do if you arrive too soon, then you're going to be travelling for a long time at low altitude, using far more fuel than your company would allow you to do, as you've lost all that potential uh, energy that you had. You just want to glide down for as long as possible. And of course, the opposite is true. If you get it wrong and you arrive too late, well, whoops! One, you're going to miss the approach, so you're going to have to probably uh, maybe enter a hold just to lose some altitude, and, cr and that increases the track miles that the aircraft's going to fly, uh, which again burns excess fuel. And that's basically the aim of the game when it comes to descending. You want to get yourself down 
at your target altitude at exactly the right time so you're not using any fuel that you don't want to use so if I was going to continue the approach here I'd activate the approach phase uh, once you activate the approach phase remember to enter managed mode with your speed otherwise your aircraft will maintain 247 knots as it was just there so now the aircraft is starting to slow down to uh, the green dot speed now the green dot speed is the best lift to drag ratio that is the ideal descent rate uh, and speed for the aircraft again that isn't correctly modeled for your rate of descent but it should be uh, if uh, fly by wire have anything to do with it it does however work for this approach mode that does slow you down to the green dot speed then down to s speed and f speed but uh, that's uh, that's another video all right so i hope you found that useful i'll just mention it one more time it is the amount of altitude you want to lose divided by 1000 multiply it by three that gives you how many miles away you want to start the descent add 10 to that just to uh, just to give you some slowing down time and then you're good to go so we're at two and a half thousand feet which realistically we probably arrived a little bit too early um, again wasn't concentrating on that too much I just wanted to give you the general rule of thumb what I would have done is slowed the descent rate down your descent rate wants to be probably about between 18 1700 feet a minute or 1800 feet a minute uh, to that speed of 270 knots until of course you get below 250 knots uh, until 10,000 feet then you need to slow down to 250 knots uh, but with that we'd actually now be uh, quite nicely ready to go over here left make a left turn and line up on the uh, on the ILS approach well I guess I hope you found that useful what I will also do is I shall put that little uh, little formula in the uh, in the video description as well but obviously now you've seen it in action thank you very much for watching please hit the subscribe button for notifications of live streams that we do and of course more tutorial videos and content that gets uploaded thanks to everyone for, uh, for taking the time to watch this hope it helps you with your flights and top of descent planning and I'll see you all again soon bye bye for now